Good day everyone and welcome to this Magicka Sorcerer PvP commentary. In this commentary I will showcase two builds, one that I call the Roll Sork and one with uh, Iron Blood that is a lot tankier that I have presented in this guide. Uh, you'll be able to find those builds through the description as well. Uh, and these are two completely different playstyles that I want to showcase and I want to show you exactly what it is that I do in 1vx, what tactics that I utilize to pull these fights off successfully. But first, I am happy to announce that this is the first sponsored video that I've got on this channel. The sponsorship is by Opera GX. Some of you might have already heard about this because it is in a browser directed at the same public as will be watching this video, namely people that are interested into gaming. And it has a lot of features that make it better than other browsers, I must admit, because now is also the first time I've been trying this browser, and I will be going over some of the things I like the most about it as I will be using this browser moving forward. For example, here on the sidebar, you have the different social media icons, things like Twitch, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and so forth. And instead of having to open this on a new tab, like on other browsers, you can just click. For example, I just got a notification from Twitch because Beast Global went live. If I click on that, it just immediately takes me to the channel and I can start watching. The same sidebar also has a music player for things like YouTube or Spotify. If you play music through this, it will automatically pause it if you happen to watch another video on YouTube as well and resume it afterwards. And there's also the GX Corner in which Opera will show you current uh, good deals on, on, on games. Even uh, when there's a free game available for a short moment, it will show that as well. You can see a bunch like here, Fallout 76 if you would happen to want to play that. Oh, look at that rating. And there's also game news, trailers, things like that, all worth checking out here in the GX Corner. You also have a lot of customization that can be done, which is quite unique as well. For example, here the background is uh, a picture I've chosen from uh, The Witcher, which I think fits the theme very well. You can also change that to whatever you want. You can also change the uh, UI to have a like, different color. There's many different choices here as well. And you can also change from dark to light mode, of course, like this. Opera GX is also available on mobile, so if you want to synchronize things there, it's definitely worth checking out. I recommend checking it out for sure, it's very easy to set up as well. And thank you very much to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. On with the commentary. For the first part of the commentary, it's with the Roll Sorg build. And this here starts with that AD player that just got rest, I've already killed that guy before. And now that small AD group over there, I'm going to try to get a fight with those. However, I am in open field, so I'm going to take it careful, see if I can just poke somebody and then go into LOS. I retreat to the rock, you, see, you will see to my left here. I'm taking quite a bit of damage, however, I have overload up. I try to pressure that one guy really quickly with Streak uh, to stun him and maybe Fury. However, I'm taking so much pressure that I need to go down into the crack of the rock. Then, on the other side of that rock, I see a lesser amount of AD, so I know I have a couple of seconds to try a burst on somebody. However, that DK there manages to tank it out and I have to retreat yet again uh, behind another side of the rock. People keep on uh, stacking on me there. You can see there's like four people now. I try to focus the Templar, however, I take too much pressure. The Templar doesn't heal that much, so I try to continue pressuring him, however now he has a rest to ult up. So I'm gonna try to swap targets. You see the guy on the rock over there, he's just casting rest to staff light attacks, he doesn't appear to have an arm buff up e either, so I'm gonna try and pressure him. He is indeed squishy, however I take a lot of sudden incoming damage from Nightblades, which forces me to into an undo. Now I'm stuck with these four people here, I think there's at least two here, so I'm just going to dance around them, poke them a bit, see who's squishy and who isn't. And it's also a large AD group I spotted to the right, so I'm going to take care not to get too close to that. However, there is two people that split up from that group and started chasing me as well. So now I'm forced on the defense, I swap to a tripod, see if I need it. I streak away with troll dodges, cancel into shields. I ended up not needing the tripod because I still had enough health, magic and stamina to just about survive it. So I switch back, I switch back to the spell power potion and take that. I'm still taking a lot of pressure, there's a very aggressive stam lane on me as well, but the cap closes and all that, and a decent amount of damage, so I keep on kiting it around, uh, until eventually I will get to a point with maybe a lesser amount of people, or a point with good LOS where I can try to burst. I jumped on that rock there, that was purely for a uh, direction change, which worked out pretty neatly, however with this rock it didn't work out very well because I wasn't able to jump on top of it. That's why it's important to know your environment, uh, this kind of cost me a couple of seconds, it can be dangerous, uh, but luckily I still made it out of it here. I retreated behind that rock with Streak instead, that's what allowed me to 
get up there and that's what allowed me to take a lot less, pressure, lot less incoming pressure. Now I go into this gap here trying to burst somebody down again but that night blade was on me again so I'm going to go back in that gap and try to burst that night blade down with a streak there. I know it goes against the rock, it will only be a short streak but it will stun him, however it didn't. I still take a lot of incoming pressure so I have to take that undo again. The undo completely bugs out and I even end up streaking into the wrong direction, falling down from the rock, but luckily there's a breakfall CP and I don't die from that. These people are still chasing me, so I'm going to try and streak to all of them again. This forces a lot of control over the group and gives me a lot of time to see who I want to pressure or to cast my defenses. However, there is still too much damage, too many people going about. I tried to focus that one player that looks a bit squishy, but it didn't work out because there's a lot of healing going on as well. So again, I go around the same rock again to see if there's other west while I cast my shields and buffs. That night bit got me with the Dawnbreaker through a roller, it can be very dangerous, however there's a tree nearby, I can go around the tree and go back again, a direction change like that is, as I mentioned before, really nice to reduce the incoming pressure, and eventually I managed to make it all around the rock. Still around 6 people on me, so I have to keep playing defensive, you can see the amount of pressure, lots of roll dodges, lots of shielding, um, and it's very important to also cancel those shields with a roll dodge. I go on top of this rock using streak, I know all those melee characters, or well people without streak, are going to have a hard time, so basically that's a bit my safe spot, I can go on top of there. Then I go to this place because the other people ran around the rock and there's two people on the rock so I can see if I can focus them. However that one guy casts the rest ult again and I'm forced to retreat down on the rock again to reduce incoming pressure. I tried to burst down that Nightblade, however he's roll dodging my attacks pretty well. So I streak on top of the rock again. All those people have to walk around to get on that rock so it gives me a lot of time to cast my buffs, my shields, etc. I tried to focus the one Nightblade, however now there's a bow wilt and everything as well. The Nightblade is pretty decent at roll dodging my attacks, so it's going to be hard to take that one down. I streak behind the rock using my camera uh, change there to kind of land behind the rock instead of just uh, on, on the side again. And I use that tree right next to it because I know those people are still there going to try and focus me as LOS. And they have to run, run all around this again. Now I'm at the last part of the clip, there's around 4 people left here. The other two must have ran away, and that is enough for me uh, to just use that tree and the environment to reduce incoming pressure and see if eventually I can burst somebody down with overload. It's going to take a while, but I know if I just keep on trying to do that, short burst with overload, if it doesn't work out, I go back behind the tree, that eventually I will kill somebody. So I try to just treat to the group, uh, get control over them, give myself time to see if I can burst somebody, and when I get damage lost, I go back to my tree, do some direction changes around that so everybody gets thrown off guard, and then try to focus somebody again, ideally with overload. You can see I have a decent amount of overload, so now I'm going to stay in that, see if eventually I can find somebody to burst down. First target didn't work, I'm going to try the same target again because he's just standing still, however he is tanky and there's other people bursting me. At this point I see the guy in the back there, he doesn't have an armor buff again, he's also standing still, so I'm going to try that one. The streak stuns him and that burst combo does work. You see in total this only takes like 3 to 4 seconds, so it has to be really quick in order to not take too much damage. That guy tries to res him, I burst him down in a similar fashion, but I use the... Uh, Bash stun as a CC at this time. I have some problems casting a shield there, a little bit of lag I guess, but eventually I do survive um, because the shield got, went off eventually and I got some roll dodges in. I took a detection potion because now there's only two people and I want to try to kill that night blade to prevent him from running away or anything or trying or pressing me any further. Finally I got him. This guy managed to get the res off. I should have used that crushing shock to uh, stun, or well, to interrupt the res, but I'm not really used to playing with that. Usually I play with elemental weapon. I still managed to kill the guy that got the rest really quickly. Now there's the final guy left. I did kill him too, but unfortunately the clip ends here. Uh, that's why I didn't use it for a normal gameplay video, but I did find it worth for a commentary, as there is a lot to talk about in terms of kiting. Now for this next clip I'm using the Iron Blood build. A similar situation as before, I found a group of AD here, now at the resource. I quickly go back to this little wall in the tree because I know I'm going to hold my ground or at least try to for a little bit. This is something that the Iron Blood build is really good at and I'm also using Agent to further emphasize that playstyle. My Agent ends up attacking the other Agent so I do a very slightly charged heavy attack to get the Agent to focus on the Mass Sork. And then I streak through everybody to, uh, to have some more control and to reduce my damage taken, just like before in the uh, roll sword build. You see I quickly have to retreat into that little gap with the tree and the uh, little wall, which is something I plan on doing anyway if things got tough. And you can see with one streak I'm basically all around the wall again and I'm forcing those people to run behind me yet again. Again this, this LOS is reducing my damage tremendously. 
I am Lord Prox again, it makes me very tanky, and I think that's also the reason I survived that negate over there. It's also because I took a tricep potion, it's something I do when I'm under heavy pressure with this build. Uh, however, there's still way too many people, so after the Iron Blood run out, I cast a rest ult and I use three streaks to get out of that situation easily. Now we get into a little bit of a small kite phase, and that's something that Iron Blood can do as well. I want to show that with this as well, even when it is proc'd. I just stand there a little bit to see if those people will trigger on me. They end up doing so, then I start kiting away. You can see with two streaks, I got to this little tree and uh, this, this tree and the little rock here, thus greatly reducing the amount of people that were on me. And now I have this little situation with those four people where I think I can hold my ground again. You can see while there were still only two people I got some nice damage into that Templar. He didn't heal up himself and I managed to finish, up, finish him off with a streak even. Now there is three people left, I'm gonna try to continue pressuring them. I'll go with the Warden here, however he has a choke Tomb proc and also kind of heals in other wests so it's difficult to focus on him. You can see a big, I think, Arctic, uh, Arctic heal, whatever it was called again. So, and the other guys are still trying to kill me, so I'm gonna have to do the same tactic where I try to hold my guard with Aetronach, Iron Blood procs, and so forth. The Stamblade has also joined and is now causing poison injections and whatnot from the distance. Hard to focus that. I tried to streak to, tried to, streak to get pressure on that guy, but the uh, healer was resing somebody, so I had to waste another streak and getting back, which is annoying. At this point, I'm not taking that much incoming damage though, so I'm safe to switch to the uh, spell power potion. While doing that though, and going into that little tree for the west a little bit, uh, that healer finally managed to res that guy, so now I'm back to the 1v4, well 1v5 I think, with the stam blade, that's in sneak somewhere. Uh, I'm blood procs, it allows me to just stand there in open field, use much less other west than I had to with the roll sword build, and tank things out. Literally just wear the enemy down, see eventually if somebody uh, doesn't heal up that much anymore, if somebody just doesn't buff up or whatever, if I see any kind of situation where I can try to burst somebody down. I can just cast Dark Conversions without even casting a shield very often, which is something that is not done on a Roll Sword, but on Iron Blood I can do that every, every now and then, because the damage reduction is just that big. And Dark Conversion gives a somewhat decent heal as well. I cast the Agent like here in this little spot. And then the Dark Conversion procs, I streak out of it right before the Dark Conversion explodes. I'm sure this build will be able to tank that out, however it is nice to just avoid damage altogether of course. Uh, then I try to focus somebody in the middle of that group, got pulled into a Dark Conversion, I've managed to walk out again, walk out of it again before it explodes, and then I can continue trying to focus somebody in the middle of that group. However with all the healing and damage going around here, it takes a while. It's something that it, I experienced quite a lot with this build, I just have to wear the enemy down and wait quite some time for a right opportunity. Much like I did in that first clip with the roll sword, but things are a bit slower there. I'm tankier, um, but also have I think a little bit less damage, however I'm still able to kill enemies just fine because I have an offensive set here as well. Meanwhile Iron Blood, Cities, Rest Ult and Aetronach can carry the amount of damage I have to take and I can stand in open field pretty frequently. I tried to stun that guy to Aetronach, it didn't work out, but I still got him with a fragment and a streak afterwards so he ended up dying again. Which is nice because now it's only 4 people anymore. I take some damage, that's why I go back to my Aetronach to just make use of the LOS and then I go for that Nightblade that was in sneak earlier because I think that might be a weaker target. However, he is doing a pretty good job at keeping his distance to me. Now he goes in for attack again, however there's a lot of healers and other uh, things going on there which allow them to survive. And I had to interrupt that rest because now this healer is again trying to get a person up. You can see this goes on for some time here uh, with me just trying to tank these guys out. This particular part of the clip is going to last a while. I think I'm going to kill one more person eventually and then I'll skip through to the end because often, as, as I was saying, when I do this iron blood it's just the same thing for a while. I stand in a certain location that is nice, can even be open field like this for example, and I just try to tank it out and then in between that when I'm a bit more comfortable on my defenses try to burst somebody down when my h is up or when the rest ult is up. I eat that meteor, I take a lot of damage because of that, so now I'm finally forced into my rest ult. That and Iron Blood combined is really strong and allowed me to then focus that sniper who took a lot of damage from the curse earlier and kill him. Um, but now we have again this guy trying to rest, it lasts for a while. To save everybody some time I will skip to the point where uh, this fight finally ends, which is around here. See, still in the same situation, now it's with the Aetronach trying to tank people out, uh, and there's still the same five guys, so we have the healer, the sniper, and so forth. 
So here I have the iron blood and the h nug standing in open field, not having a single bit of need of, for, for rocks or trees because the h nug is my LOS and even without that I have just so much damage reduction on this build. This healer here didn't heal himself up that well anymore, he probably should have cast an arctic uh, heal again instead of just his hots. And that eventually allowed me to kill him because I out DPS'd him quite literally more than his uh, healing would do. And the reason I'm able to do that as well is because I don't need to focus as much on roll dodging and, and kiting and streaking away as I have on the roll sword build. So I'm on, like I'm able to kind of keep on focusing enemies in between my defensive skills as well. Here, same thing happened. I w I did that streak to uh, I think get out, but I was still able to focus that enemy because. My heals are running, like my shields, my, my rapid regeneration and all that, it keeps on running. I have an h knock up again, uh, pretty quickly, because I have uh, killed some enemies before that. And here I get another kill really quickly with that, because now there's also a reduced amount of people. There's just that sniper over there, he sees me focusing him and instantly just runs it, he just legs it. However, even for chasing enemies, this build can still uh, be quite alright. The only problem is that I ran out of Magicka there, which can happen, but an occasional heavy attack and I had a detection potion as well allowed me to chase him. He, he ended up dying from a second curse explosion anyway. It leaves me with this last guy here, who is a healer. Now, of course, I am fully interested in damaging him. I don't really expect much incoming damage, so I just keep on wearing him down bit by bit. Eventually, I get him with the Fury, and that is the end of this clip. So I hope with that you really saw the difference between the two master playstyles that I was presenting for, for this patch. I might do more playstyles next patch and give more commentaries as well. But you have this roll sword build that is very evasive, it's very, have to stay on your toes all the time. Use the roll dodge cancels with the shield and if you make one error in that, like I can often die be because of one error uh, with that kind of build. Um, but it is like, I find it more fun because there's just a lot more engagement, a lot more going on and it also has a higher damage potential I think. And then we have the uh, Iron Blood over here, the Iron Blood build, which can tank things out a little more. I can just stand in open field with four or five enemies hitting me at the same time and be quite alright because that Iron Blood, the Citus and the Ultimate allows me to take a lot of damage and in between that I can keep on pressuring the enemy, still have a decent amount of damage due to the offensive set, uh, Spinels it is here I think. And in between me casting the occasional shield, heal, ultimate and such, I can keep on pressuring the enemy with curses, uh, spammable, fragment, streak and so forth. But yeah, I hope this commentary was useful um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. The next patch will be out soon, so I think I'll be bringing out a gameplay video as soon as I can get some gameplay for that. So stay tuned for that. Join the Discord in case you want to have notifications for my uh, videos or if you have any questions about what I just said. You can also post it in the uh, YouTube comment section here of course. And you can also check out my Twitch, Patreon and website links for builds and support. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!